two of the Canton Fair. Eva got off to a good start today. She drank a bunch of milk, pooped a bunch of shit, and now she's sleeping. Huh? Introduce yourself. <laughs> Introduce Hello, yourself. Hello, this is San My <laughs> Okay, hello, this is uh, Sunny. When did, when, did, when did I teach you? When did we have class? What year was that? I think maybe about uh, five years ago. Five years, years ago. ago, yeah. I, I was her English teacher. Yeah. Oh. It's our class, yay! We are walking to Lao Wai Tan. Yeah. Look at that crew. We'll take a picture. Ready? Ye, are, sub. <laughs> He, he is my English teacher. <laughs> now she's working at the booth here doing the picture frames with, uh, with Annie. Yeah, I bumped into her just strangely by coincidence. So Annie's booth right now that she's at is picture frames. But like I said, it's the whole big family of her and her friends and her family that have picture frame factories too. And this is another booth of picture frames. We'll go to three other booths of picture frames that are all related. Like for example, fake flowers. That fake flower factory is probably in an area with a bunch of other fake flower factories. And they're probably related in some way. Did you ever wonder where they make gigantic castings of Jesus? China. Eva is being very fussy today. She just won't sleep for long, 20 minutes at a time. And every time she wakes up, then she's more tired. And she sleeps another 20 minutes and then wakes up. I'm gonna have to find a solution maybe like tomorrow. I'm filming myself. Anyways, we'll see. We'll see if we can get her relaxed. Tonight I'll do a walk around uh, Guangzhou a little bit. All right, we're calling today on the counter Viva, headed back to the hotel. She just won't sleep and she needs to rest and she's whining anyways. across the way was on fire, but I think it was just like training or something. There's a bunch of fire trucks down there. I like, really want to get up there and fly the drone, but the weather's for rainy. All right, guys, so we decided not to go to the fair tomorrow because Eva was too cranky today. So the end of the Canton Fair series. I wish I could have gotten a little bit more into it, but um, that's okay. Tomorrow afternoon still need to go. Oh, we will go. go there. Okay. Because flight is late. Okay, maybe I'll do my Canton Fair sum up. Anyways, it's a beautiful day outside. Finally, after a bunch of rain, I haven't been able to fly the drone at all. I'm gonna try and bring it and see if maybe I can fly it. But what we're gonna do is a Guangzhou specialty. We go out to a uh, Turkish restaurant that does really good Turkish food. So that will be Eva's first today. First time to a Turkish restaurant. That's how daddy carried daughter. More? You need to take a rest? I'm almost there. Careful, too many steps. 
I can't work well. Hey guys, the footage that you saw from the drone wasn't so amazing. Partly because I had to stop. Because somebody was nervous. I have problem. She forced me to land. I was trying to get above this guy. And it just... I just was almost there and then I had to... Uh, <laughs> she's like, land it, land it! Sure this way, honey? Yeah. I think Guangzhou was the first city I ever came to in China. Ever. I came here for the Canton Fair. I think it was 2006. Why did I meet you? I don't know. She was at the fair. Didn't cross paths with Annie until much later. My first impressions of Guangzhou as a first timer in China. Dirty and scary and busy and sickening. <laughs> sickening means I got, I, I'll get sick there. I went to the fair in one part to buy a special type of keychain. And the owner of the keychain factory met me at the Canton Fair. His name was Yu Peng Chan. <laughs> he was a goofball. He had the dirtiest teeth you've ever seen in your life. I mean, just before they start falling out. I mean, black teeth. And he loved to smile. Big, big teeth smiles. Like, yee! He had this thing he'd say, like, if you asked him about something, he'd Which say, way? just straight. We need to get into, into that area. He had this thing, everything that you'd ask him about, he'd say, sure. But he didn't, wouldn't say sure like I said sure just now. He would say, sure. And he would sp spring his lips apart, sure. And, oh man, it was horrible. So he asked me to go out to eat one day. So we went to a seafood restaurant here in Guangzhou. Guangzhou is a little bit different than Ningbo. The food is, I don't know, what would you say the food in Guangzhou? Good. Good, but different, right? Yeah. Different than Ningbo. Why is it different? They eat the roll. Cantonese eat everything. <laughs> yeah, they eat everything. So we go to this restaurant. It's a fish restaurant. Now, okay, the pictures and video that I'm showing you of Guangzhou today did not look like Guangzhou 10 years ago. I mean, China in general has come a long way and Guangzhou in particular because the Canton Fair drew in so much business has come a long long way but we were on some back alley restaurant in Guangzhou oh, look at those, all those places everybody eating outside hold on let me let me catch up we're trying to find out where we're going before we hit the Turkish restaurant why don't I take a look at an interesting seafood restaurant in Guangzhou Guangzhou is well known for seafood Holy moly! Annie loves king crab. Look at this. <laughs> Change of plans. Wow. What do you want to do? 540 40 plus 7. It's not expensive. Want to get one? Can we? Do you want Turkish or do you want uh, king crab? I want both. Alright, do you want to have king crab first? Holy moly, look at the size of these lobsters. Holy moly. I told you, people down here eat everything. Actually, Annie told you. Each half kilo, the price is eight RMB more, which is, no, 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 okay. Should be discount if you buy more. No, 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 add more to cook it. Oh. For, oh, for you're just buying the meat and then yeah. you have to choose so the way to cook I, it. We, I select the one, 4.4 4 plus 289. The price will be once only 271 for one piece. It's more expensive than I buy import from Alaska. Okay. Annie doesn't like to be screwed around. Yeah. So we're gonna go to the Turkish restaurant. But I did get some cool video. 600 just for cooking. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, it's like a hundred dollars just to cook it. Okay, Annie's a bit frustrated. It's getting late and she's worried about Eva who's already awake and took a while to get here, longer than we had expected. So we're just gonna buy from the Turkish restaurant as soon as it's ready, take a taxi back to the hotel. Annie's going a little crazy. Can I tell him what you're feeling? She's feeling overloaded with worry. She can't stop thinking about, like, if she brings the baby around people, she's going a little crazy. I have a feeling right now, the only thing she wants to do is get the hell out of here. <laughs> is that, am I right? I just think it's, it's just being a mom. Anyways, here it is. So while Annie orders, maybe I can finish my story. So Yu Peng Chan, Yu Peng Chan wanted to take me out on the town because I was placing an order for keychains, custom keychains with him and he was showing his gratitude. So he took me to a restaurant in Guangzhou, seafood restaurant. It was one of the first times I had seen one of these places where they take the fish out of the tank and you pick your fish from the tank itself. So I'm watching him, he's picking out the food that we're gonna eat and he picks out this big fish. The, the chef takes the fish out of the fish tank and then he proceeds, okay, let me sideline this. This is a very dirty restaurant. A very dirty restaurant. Off of a very dirty street with a lot of very dirty shoes traipsing through the seafood choice area. Well, okay, back to story. Takes the fish, slams it on the ground to kill the fish. Shoulder width apart, my, this fish. So he slams it on the ground, the fish is dead. Then uh, the chef walks over to the wall and grabs off of the wall, a, it was a, you know those skimmers for pools? Well, he takes this net and it's on a really long handle. And, huh? Omaha. Yeah, yeah. So he takes this net and he puts it on the ground, like about six feet in front of the fish. And he decides to scrape along the ground until he gets the fish and then he scoops the fish up into the net. And then he walks this fish back into the restaurant. So not only had he slapped this fish down on the dirtiest ground you could ever imagine, but he scooped it up in the worst possible way to scoop up all the rest of the filth from the floor. I should have taken that as a sign that this was not gonna be a good meal. The fish comes out, it's got some sweet and sour sauce on it, but it's the whole fish, scales and everything. All the filth from the road was still there. It was just covered in sauce. They all dig in, they got a bunch of beers and they start drinking, so then, I start eating and drinking with them. I should have known, I should have known. Either way, I finished the fish and the, uh, the sickness and vomiting didn't come in until a little bit later. Now, another sideline to the story. Yu Peng Chan and his partner were supposed to take me out to a place in Guangzhou, uh, KTV, and they had three young ladies that were interested in hanging out as well. I don't know if he paid him, I don't know what the deal was, I just know that he's like, yeah, Matt, you come now. We have a big party after. I have three ladies just for you. But here I had gotten really, really sick and I call him up and I said, Yupun, I'm sorry, man, I, I can't go. I am curled up in bed. I had taken my temperature, it was 104. I says, we, we can't. I says, you gotta take me to the hospital. I, I gotta get to the hospital. This is like one of my first times in China. Are you noticing a theme here of hospitals? I was born into China via hospital and carry it with me like a tradition. Anyways, he's not convinced that I'm sick. He's convinced that I'm trying to avoid going out with these three girls. He's like, no, it's okay. These girls, it's fun. We'll have lots of fun. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm like, don't worry. I says, come over here. So they come to the hotel where I was staying and the moment they open the door, their gears shifted into, let's get this guy to the hospital. I was sweating profusely and curled up on the bed. The bed was soaked. It was a mess. So that they took me to the hospital and I ended up sitting in a hospital bed for a while, getting a bunch of fluids pumped into me, four IV bags, if I remember correctly. I was there for a good five hours until they brought my temperature down. Yeah, that's my impression of Guangzhou. Listen, Guangzhou's come a long way since since I went out with Yupeng Chan on that dirty back road street. Oh, 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 there's a, there's a tertiary story to this 
this story I just told you. That same restaurant we went to, that same restaurant we went to, this is gross. So anybody that don't want to be grossed out, please, please fast forward about five minutes. Okay, can you take her for a little bit? I'm telling a story. The finishing the story of Yu Peng Chan taking me out to eat. He was gonna get me three girls that night, but I was Yu Peng. Oh. And but I was too sick because I ate that fish that he threw on the ground. Remember that story? Anyways, and then but before that, while I was at that restaurant that was really nasty, fish is being cooked. It hasn't come out yet, and I have to go to the bathroom. So I went outside the restaurant, and they pointed me to this really dirty hole in the wall. And I go to the hole in the wall and I enter this bathroom. It's probably one of the grossest bathrooms I've ever been in. It, it was tile, smooth tile, that basically was covered in feces and dirt. Along one edge was the bathroom. It was just a trough though, like a long trough. At the end of the trough was a hole. Okay, yeah. At the end of the trough was a hole. The objective was to do number one or number two in that trough. And then every 20 minutes or so, a guy would come by with a hose and push everything back down to the hole at the one end. Anyways, I'm going to the bathroom in this place and I, I'm, I'm peeing and this rat comes up, big rat, the size of a cat, st sticks his head out of the hole where all the stuff gets washed down to and he looks at me and then I look at him and then he looks at me and I look at him and, <laughs> and then I just, I just super soaked him. I just, I just super soaked him back down the hole. Like, get down there, get down. And he's like, oh, 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 I'll see you later, you're not worth it. So he turns around and goes back down a the hole. Then I went and ate a fish and got me in the hospital. That is my story of my first trip to Guangzhou.